Welcome to Financial Focus, brought to you by Gulf Coast Financial Services founder and CEO, John Kirkendall. John and his team of financial, legal, and tax professionals have provided North Florida savers and investors sound, comprehensive financial guidance for over 25 years, helping you to achieve important life and planning goals. Be sure to like, subscribe, share, and tune in for more financial focus by visiting GulfCoastFinancial.net. And welcome in to another great edition of Financial Focus, brought to you by the best of the best in financial services, as named by the readers of the Lake City Reporter, seven years and running the team from Gulf Coast Financial Services, your resource, ladies and gentlemen, for a common sense approach to your money, for guidance, perspective about your financial decisions, and founder and CEO John Kirkendall with us each and every week providing that perspective. John, may you live in interesting times. Welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Peter. It's yeah. great to be here. <laughs> we, 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 and we certainly do. Um, last week on the program, John, we talked about the importance of a plan actually mm -hmm. including the probability, the likelihood that we will encounter headwinds in the market, periods where the market is not always growing, in fact, include the, the realistic likelihood of facing downturns. This week on the program, we want to talk about some investment fundamentals that will help us stay on track and continue making progress, even if and when we do encounter those downturns. Well, that's right, Peter. I, you know, one of the things that uh, we need to do is there are investment uh, fundamentals that we need to be aware of, and we need to do it. And what, the first one is that we should invest as soon as we can while we're young. Because the sooner I invest, the sooner I'm going to find that magic of compound interest, where my money is just going to keep compounding. And later on in life, I'm going to have a lot more money than if I started in my 30s and 40s. If you can start investing as soon as you get your job, just a little bit of money, you'll be surprised at how fast it'll grow. I met this uh, at lunch this said today with a um, a simple IRA group we were talking to, and several of the participants were very young, and I encouraged them to invest as much as they could now while they can, because it will pay off in the long run. We need to invest as much as we can, as early as we can, and stay with it, and we'll have a kind of retirement income that we really want, and it's going to cost a lot more, Peter, as you know. Taxes are going up. Inflation's still there. Things are going to be a lot more expensive when these young kids retire like you. And, and finance yeah. and, and the way that we handle money, it's, it's behavioral, it's psychological. Yeah. So if we form that habit and that routine early, it's easy yep. to stick with it through even challenging times. What I find, John, is if somebody has not had that as a habit, they may build up some money and, and invest it here and, and a little bit more in, in a couple of years when I can build it up. But it, they are more likely to not continue to make financial progress if we face a little challenge or headwind. They're, they're more likely to be the ones that say, well, the market's down, I'm not going to invest right now. Whereas the ones that have formed that habit and made it routine, just keep on through good times, bad times. It is just part of their behavior. Yeah. And they're doing dollar cost averaging because I'm buying at all different stages of the market. I'm buying high, I'm buying low and over all it averages out. So you want to be able to dollar cost average in. One of the worst things you can do is have a match for your 401k or simple IRA from the company and not take advantage of that. That's free money. But, you know, a lot of people treat it as, well, you know, that's the company want me to do that. So I don't want to do it. Or a lot of people think it's free money. So I quit that job. And instead of rolling that over to the new, new company, I take it out and spend it. I mean, how many times has that happened? Yeah. So don't get sidetracked or distracted. The 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 day to day, month to month, year to year atmosphere of the economy of the market should not derail your investment progress. That's one of the fundamental principles of long term financial success is just stick with the program. But you got to have a program. You got to have a plan in order to have the confidence to stick to it, too. That's right. And I think if you're allocated property properly and if you 
um, do what you're supposed to do, your risk tolerance number is right, that you will be able to invest over and over and over again in the market and really not worry about those downturns because you know the market's going to come around. The other thing that we talked about earlier was um, you and I talked about was to stay out of debt. You know, that's one of the worst things a young person can do is buy all the things that I want, not necessarily what I need, but what I want and pay for it on time because that's interest that's going away. I don't get my, I don't get any return on that. Um, and certainly if we can stay out of debt, we'll be much better off. Not, not even don't get return. It's negative. The, the interest yeah. rate on credit cards, oftentimes, John, I think are high double digits, 14 to 24%. I've, I've sort of seen that range that is working against your financial <laughs> progress as a negative rate of return. So yeah, I, I think that debt is a tool. It can be a tool and it's yes. probably something that mm -hmm. In one form or another, John, we all experience and, and utilize at some point in our financial mm -hmm. lifetime, but unfortunately, it, it's a tool that oftentimes gets misused and can really get people in trouble. Well, how many times have you seen the uh, talk to a person that said, well, I got that at zero interest, or I got that, I bought that, and, and I'm going paying a low interest rate, and I'm going to pay it off before it comes due. And then they don't. The next thing you know, they're paying 25% interest because the credit card companies can move it up anytime they feel like that they're, that they're, uh, they're at risk. And so, you know, your credit score can get really hammered. You can have a good credit score, a lot of income coming in, but if you don't have money to pay off that debt, you can get hammered with that interest rate. And I've seen it in more than one person. Another item on the list here from your practical financial fundamentals, John, just understanding what we do with our money. And we, we may imagine that we do just about everything with our money, but when you boil it down, you've got these four very simple things that kind of all of it can be categorized into. Well, that's right, Peter. You know, the first thing is we pay taxes and you know, everybody I talk to believes that taxes are going to be going up. So we're going to be paying more taxes in the, in the future. We pay bills and hopefully we've got a budget and we're keeping those under control and we know how we're spending our money. And that's the third one, spend. You know, we're going to buy, we're going to, we're going to give it away to churches and charities, um, but we're going to do things with our money. And then the last one is save and invest. And unfortunately, save and invest should be closer to the top than the fourth one we talk about. I think most we successful should, people do put that closer to mm -hmm. the top. I mean, the 401k, the idea behind it is that you put that even in front of paying taxes, right? Yeah. Pay yourself first. Yeah. 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 I like that. At the end of the day though, John, you do those other things, pay taxes, pay bills, spend, give those dollars are gone forever. It's only what we've saved and invested. That's <laughs> left to recreate our ability to do those things down the line. And, and once the paycheck stops, we've got to use that saving and investment to be able to pay taxes, pay bills and spend. Well, you know, Peter, that's right. And that's why 40% of Americans who are on social security are living on social security only mm. because they didn't save. they paid, they bought things, spent things. The average investment account for retirees is only $186,000. Now, there are a lot that have a lot more than that, but there are some who have none. Mm -hmm. So the average is 186,000. That's not a lot of money to retire on. Well, in order to make the most of it and give us the ability to continue to pay taxes, pay bills and spend our money into retirement. Number 4, we save and invest. And John, once we do that, we've got to understand what the money can do for us. And again, it may seem like it's a lot of different things that money can do for us, but you've, you've boiled this down to four simple categories of what money can do. And it's really not great at doing all of them at the same time. <laughs> well, you know, Peter, it can grow. It can be safe. It can be liquid and it can also create income. But, you know, that would be the perfect investment. And unfortunately, there is no perfect investment. So I can get growth, but I might not be able to create income. I can get safe, but I may not be able to create income. I can get, I can get liquid, but I'm not going to create a lot of income. Because if I'm liquid, I'm investing for a short term. The returns aren't there. 
even with interest rates going up, they're still not going to be there. So there is no perfect investment. I, you know, I would like to hope that we're all growing and trying to be as safe as we can with our risk tolerance and watching our accounts and watching the market and staying invested and doing that dollar cost averaging. I don't know how we're doing with that, but we'll find out. But different pieces obviously work to help us achieve different goals there between growth, yeah, safety, liquidity, sure. and, and income. And that's why, John, on a regular basis, you talked about dollar cost averaging, regular ongoing investment, but also equally as important, regular rebalancing. So the right amount oh. is working to achieve each one of those separate goals. Yeah. I mean, we've got to have rebalancing. Our accounts get out of sync. If I've made 20%, then my risk tolerance isn't what it was because the growth has been in my growth funds. It hasn't been in my income and my bond funds. So I need to rebalance to get back to my, my number that I can sleep at night. And rebalancing is an is a important part of our overall strategy and should be an important part of our income plan. We want to capture gains along the way. We don't want to put all of our, our portfolio at risk in, in aggressive growth funds when we need to be more uh, conservative. Again, we are talking with John Kirkendall, founder, CEO at Gulf Coast Financial Services. And today uh, we are discussing, even as we face some, some challenges where the future is, is a, a little cloudy, it can be overwhelming, oftentimes the best way to attack those complex kind of overwhelming topics is to break it down into simple steps and stick to the basics. And today we're talking about those practical fundamentals for long-term success that work in good times and bad times to help make sure we are continuing our financial progress. Uh, rebalancing, John, that is something that can be uh, regular and routine, can be strategic, can be tactical, but it does help us to achieve and accomplish several financial goals. You mentioned keeping our risk tolerance aligned with our, our portfolio. It also can help us capture gains when they're available. Mm -hmm. And over time, what we're rebalancing to may shift. Um, for example, you know, 21 years ago, as we were going through the dot-com bubble, uh, 15 years ago, as we were entering into the Great Recession, I, I was relatively unscathed as we moved through that and, and remained mm -hmm. pretty aggressive. But today, I may want a slightly different mix and balance and allocation if we were to experience another downturn like that into the future. And I should continue to monitor and update my desires on an ongoing basis, not when we experience that downturn. Well, that's right, Peter. It's based, you know, as we get older, we're going to need to be a little bit more conservative than we were when we were younger. Uh, I mean, back when you were the dot-com era, there were things like the Jacob Internet Fund that was doing 90%. It's gone. <laughs> so, you know, it went away. So you can't just leave your money in a fund or in a stock and not try to capture gains, try to be conservative. It's based upon your plan. We, we have an income plan for a reason. The income plan looks at where we are, where we're going, and when we're going to get there. And we want to get you there with as much money as we can get you there with, and as conservative as we can possibly be when we get there. It's which bucket you're pulling the money out of. Well, again, if you would like to make sure that you've got a plan that you can turn back to and make sure that you are addressing the fundamentals for long-term financial success, that's what the financial focus plan is all about. And if you've got a plan, would like to double check it, review it, update it, or if you'd like to get that plan put together, pick up the phone and give Gulf Coast Financial Services a call 386-755-9018, 386-755-9018. Uh, for the sake of time, kind of consolidating these last ones, John, and you just alluded to this, is that we actually go through different phases with our money. Mm -hmm. That is a, a, a practical fundamental that we need to understand and recognize within the planning process. And our plan should reflect mm -hmm. the phase that we're in and the one that we want mm -hmm. to move to into the future. That's right, Peter. The first one's going to be accumulation. We're working, we're paying ourselves uh, for our retirement accounts. The second one is preservation. I'm getting close to retirement. I want to preserve what I can. I want to make sure that I can go into retirement with as much money as I can. 
The third one is distribution. I'm going to take that money that I've saved and now I'm going to pay myself a check because I'm not working. And the final one is the legacy that I'm going to leave to my heirs and to the charities that I support. So each one of those phase, which one of those phases is has a different requirement, a different need. And we need to address all of those in the income plan, which we do. Well, again, if you would like to get that plan put together, pick up the phone, give John Kirkendall and the team there at Gulf Coast Financial Services a call, 386-755-9018, 386-755-9018. Each one of these fundamental principles, probably, John, could be a program of its own. In fact, you've got a library of great shows that probably address many of these there mm -hmm. on the website, Gulf Coast financial.net, golfcoastfinancial.net, and the blog includes the archives of all of the great podcasts, but understanding that we need to invest early, often, and as much as possible, stay out of debt, don't get sidetracked in our progress or distracted by the news of the day, understand right. what we do with money and what therefore money can do for us, dollar cost averaging, rebalancing, mm -hmm. taking advantage of those retirement accounts and understanding the different phases of money, uh, all important aspects that you help bring together into that financial focus retirement income plan. That's right. Don't forget, we look at taxes. We want to save as much taxes as we can. We want to analyze your taxes. We want to know where you are there. So it's a complete financial income plan. Well, if you'd like to get that put together, pick up the phone, give a call 386-755-9018, 386-755-9018. John, always a, a pl pleasure uh, when you join us on the program, providing this guidance and information, reminding us of what's important with our financial progress. Thank you, Peter. It was great to be here. Have a good week. Be sure to like, subscribe, share, and tune in for more financial focus by visiting GolfCoastFinancial.net. The information presented on this program is provided for informational purposes only, without warranty of accuracy, completeness, or suitability for a particular purpose. This program is not intended to be and does not constitute financial, investment, legal, or tax advice. This information is general in nature and not specific enough to be construed as advice. You should not make any decision based on the information presented on this program without independent consultation with an appropriately licensed professional or competent advisor. Investment in securities or the market involves a potential risk for loss of principal. Trading, therefore, may not be suitable for all listeners. Annuity guarantees are based only on the financial strength and claims paying ability of the issuing company. Withdrawals of growth from annuities may be taxable as ordinary income in the year it is taken. Individuals should review contracts for specific details of the product's features and costs. Early withdrawals may subject the owner to penalties, fees, or taxes. John Kirkendall is registered with and securities are offered through Kovac Securities, Inc., member FINRA SIPC, found online at www.kovacsecurities.com. Advisory services are offered through Gulf Coast Financial Services, Inc., a registered investment advisor in Florida. Gulf Coast Financial Services, Inc. is not affiliated with with Kovac Securities, Inc. or Kovac Advisors, Inc. Past performance is not indicative of future results. All investing involves risk. Investment decisions should be based on your own goals, time horizon, and tolerance for risk. Due to various factors, including changing market conditions and or applicable laws, the content may no longer be reflective of current opinions or positions.